Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 18. And in this video, we're going to be learning about absolute value. So for our lesson objectives, we want to learn how to find the absolute value of a number. And also we want to learn how to simplify when absolute value is present. So in our last lesson, we were introduced to a new group of numbers known as the integers, right? And this allowed us to see some negative values or some values to the left of zero. So before we start working with these integers, adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing, it's important that we learn the definition of absolute value. So if we look on the screen here, we see that the absolute value of a number is the distance, okay, the distance between that number and zero on the number line. So what if I started out by asking you, what is the absolute value of the number three? And the way we're gonna ask for this is we're gonna have these vertical bars around the number that we wanna find the absolute value for. So this right here is basically saying, what is the absolute value of three? Okay, that's what this means. Again, the vertical bars are surrounding the number we're trying to find the absolute value for. Now, following our definition that we were given, the absolute value of a number, again, is the distance between that number and zero on the number line. So if I find three on the number line and I find zero on the number line, I just need to count how far away it is. And it's just one, two, three units away. So the absolute value of three is just three. Now, one thing I want you to note right away, what if I asked you for the absolute value of negative three? You're gonna find that you're gonna have the exact same absolute value because it's one, two, three units away from zero as well. So the absolute value of negative three is also equal to three. This goes back to our definition of opposites. Remember in the last lesson where we talked about opposites, we said that opposites were numbers that lied on opposite sides of the number line. So in this case, you have three and negative three, they're on opposite sides, and they had the same distance from zero. So this one has the distance of three, right? You have to travel three units to the right to get to zero. This one has the distance of three. You have to travel three units to the left to get to zero. So opposites are always gonna have the exact same absolute value because they have the same distance from zero on the number line. So for example, if I said, what is the absolute value of seven? And what is the absolute value of negative seven? In each case, the answer is gonna be seven, right? If I look at seven and negative seven, in each case, I have to travel seven units to get to zero, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the absolute value of seven is seven and the absolute value of negative seven is seven. So another thing I want you to note right away is that the absolute value of a number is never going to be negative. It's always going to be zero or some positive value. And the reason for that is absolute value represents a distance and a distance is not gonna ever be negative. Right, for example, in real life, you think about waking up and going to work. You can either not go to work and drive zero miles, or you can drive some amount of miles. It could be 10 miles, 20, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And I know some of you will put in the comments that you could back up, but no, that's not driving a negative amount, sorry. Do we really need to pull out a number line every time we wanna find the absolute value of a number? Of course not. The rule is, if the number is negative, just make it positive. So for example, if I asked you for the absolute value of negative 37, you would just make it positive. It would just be 37, right? Essentially, if it's negative, make it positive. Negative 37 would be 37 units away from zero on the number line. If the number is zero or positive, keep it the same, okay? So if the number zero, so if you had the absolute value of zero, zero is zero units away from zero on the number line, so it's just zero. If it's some positive value, let's say it's, I don't know, 42. It's just that number, right? It's gonna be 42 units away from zero on the number line. All right, let's look at a few problems. So we wanna find the absolute value of 19. So again, if it's a positive number, just keep it the same. So the absolute value of 19 is just 19. Because if we had a number line there, I would count 19 units to the left to get to zero if I started from 19, right? It's 19 units away. So the absolute value of 19 is just 19. What about the absolute value of zero? Well, again, zero is zero units away from itself on the number line, so the answer is zero. What about the absolute value of negative 24? Again, if you have a negative number, just make it positive. 
So I make this positive and I get 24. Okay, what about the absolute value of negative 34,422? Well, again, if it's a negative value, just make it positive. So this would just be 34,422. Okay, now we wanna replace the question mark with the correct symbol. So we have less than, greater than, or equal to. Okay, for the first one, we're gonna look at the absolute value of negative 27, question mark the absolute value of 22. All right, so first let's think about what these are worth. So the absolute value of negative 27 is 27. And the absolute value of 22 is 22. Again, for this one, it was negative, so we just made it positive. For this one, it was positive, so it just stayed the same. So if we think about the relationship here, the absolute value of negative 27 is a larger number, so it's greater than the absolute value of 22. And again, the reason for this is because this ends up being 27 after we apply the absolute value. So 27 would be bigger than 22. And again, you want to point the symbol towards the smaller number. Okay, now we have the absolute value of zero, question mark the absolute value of negative five. So the absolute value of zero we know is zero. The absolute value of negative five is five. Again, just change the sign from negative to positive. So which one's gonna be bigger? Is five bigger or zero bigger? Well, five is bigger. So the absolute value of zero is going to be less than the absolute value of negative five. Again, the symbol is gonna to point to the smaller value. What about the absolute value of negative seven, question mark seven? Well, in this case, the absolute value of negative seven is seven. So seven and seven have the same value, so we're gonna use an equal sign. So we're gonna say the absolute value of negative seven is equal to seven. So sometimes we're also gonna to have to simplify when we're working with absolute value. And one of the things you have to be careful about, in the last lesson, I kinda of gave you a little trick on how to simplify when you have a bunch of negatives involved. So I want you to look here and see that we have what? We have the opposite of the absolute value of negative 13. Now, let me just kind of put this to the side for a second. I wanna show you this problem. So let's say we had the opposite of negative 13. We would count the number of those symbols we have, and again, if it's even, divisible by two, the result is positive. If it's odd, not divisible by two, it's negative. So here we have one, two of those symbols. So that's an even number, so the answer is positive, right? Because you have the opposite of negative 13, that's just 13. Now, when you're working with absolute value, you can only count the number of symbols you have outside of the absolute value bars. And the reason for that is because remember, the result of the absolute value operation always makes things non-negative, okay? Always makes it non-negative. So the least it's gonna be a zero. Now, thinking about this, if I count only the negatives outside of this operation here, I only have one, one's an odd number, so I know the result's gonna be negative 13, right? Please don't make the mistake of trying to apply that trick with absolute value and getting it wrong because some students will say, okay, I have one, two of those symbols, two's an even number, I got positive 13. No, because when you evaluate this the slow way, you would say, okay, the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13, right? You make the negative positive, and then you have the opposite of positive 13, which becomes negative 13. So pay close attention when you have the absolute value operation involved. Okay, now we have the opposite of the opposite of the absolute value of 21. So again, I would count the number of these symbols that I have outside of my absolute value bars. So I have two of them, two is an even number, so my result would be positive. But again, if you wanna kinda of do this the slow way, you have the opposite of, the opposite of, the result of this would be 21. So the absolute value of 21 is just 21, right? If it's positive, keep it the same. So we'll put this in parentheses. So this would be 21 here. And the opposite of 21 would be negative 21. So let's write this as the opposite of negative 21. And then one more time, we'll change the sign to positive 21. But again, the shortcut, count the number of those symbols you have outside of the absolute value operation. And that's gonna tell you if it's even, you're gonna have a positive number. If it's odd, you're gonna have a negative number. Okay, here we have the opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of the absolute value of negative 53. Again, pay attention, you have one, two, three symbols outside of your absolute value operation. Please don't count this one. Because this one right here, you gotta think about it. When we're done with this absolute value operation, 
this is going to be a positive number. It's not going to be negative, right? It's different than if I had the opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of negative 53. In this case, this ends up being a positive 53, right? Because I have one, two, three, four negatives. Four is an even number. I'm going to end up with positive 53. This becomes positive, then negative, then positive. Here it's going to be different. Because I start out, basically you can think about this right here, it's just positive 53. The absolute value of negative 53 will be positive. So this is positive, it's not really negative. So this will end up going to negative, then positive, then negative. Right? So that's why you'd end up with negative 53. Again, doing this the slow way, let me kind of show you this. The opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of, the absolute value of negative 53 is 53. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. Now, change the sign. So this will become the opposite of 53 is negative 53. So the opposite of, the opposite of, negative 53. Change the sign again. So it'll become positive 53. So the opposite of 53. And then change the sign one last time to negative 53. And again, I can't repeat this enough. If I just look at how many of these signs I have outside of the absolute value operation, if it's odd, which in this case I have one, two, three, three is an odd number, I know I'm going to get a negative result. If it's even, right, divisible by two, I know I'm going to get a positive result. Okay, last problem. We have the opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of, and then the absolute value of six plus three. Now, again, I can count the number of symbols I have outside of the absolute value operation. I have one, two, three. So I know the result's going to be negative. Basically, I can just kind of eyeball this and see that I'm going to have the absolute value of six plus three, which is nine. And I know I'd have negative nine, right? It's, it's a very, very simple problem. But let's kind of go through it the slow way. So let's copy this, the opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of, and then we know six plus three is nine. So inside of absolute value bars, we'd have nine. And even at this point, we can see we'd have negative nine as a result. But again, let's keep going. So now we just take the absolute value of nine, that's nine. So we'd have the opposite of, the opposite of, the opposite of, and then we'd have nine. And now we would just go through and take the opposite. So the opposite of nine would be negative nine. So we'd have the opposite of, the opposite of negative nine. Then take the opposite of negative nine, you get positive nine. So the opposite of positive nine. And then the opposite of nine is just negative nine. So absolute value is a very easy concept overall. You just have to remember, if you're taking the absolute value of a negative number, make it positive. If you're taking the absolute value of zero or a positive number, just keep it the same.